Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create an awesome channel point redeem that your chat will definitely, no, they're definitely gonna troll you with it. Throwing flashbang. Sector clear. In order to get this working, we're gonna use Atom for the automation, along with the downstream keyer plugin in OBS Studio and a pair of Elgato key lights. This will work with the key lights, the key light airs, and even the key light minis. Uh, so the first step is to get everything set up in OBS Studio. We're gonna start by getting the downstream keyer plugin by Exceldro downloaded. Um, I'll go over it, uh, the functionality of the plugin briefly, uh, but if you want a more in-depth look at that plugin, I'll leave a link below in the description to a video that Andy Lippy did uh, that really goes into detail uh, on what you can do with this plugin. Um, so the first thing we're going to be doing uh, is downloading that plugin. Uh, so also in the description below, you'll find a link to to this web page uh, for Downstream Keyer. Uh, in the upper right, you're just going to click download. And uh, most people can just use the Windows installer, uh, standard program installer. Uh, should install it directly to your OBS Studio directory if you've installed OBS Studio uh, in the normal fashion. I'm going to go over uh, just how to install using the zip folder function, which should help uh, Mac and Linux users uh, understand their file path uh, for installation pretty easily. So we're going to drop this in the downloads folder. And we're going to pick this up and extract it here. And we'll just copy these two folders, the data and OBS plugins folder from the downstream keyer download that we just received. And we're going to go to our C drive. Uh, and for most people, this is going to be in program files. It might be in program files x86, depending on your setup. And you'll scroll down to find OBS Studio. And all you got to do is paste those folders here. And we're going to. Um, either hit continue or if the files are already there, replace the files in the destination like so. Uh, and perfect, you should be good to go. So we can close out of these windows here and I'm gonna launch OBS. Once you have OBS Studio started up, you should see a downstream keyer window here. Uh, if you don't, you can find one of these uh, borders here to right click and you should see downstream keyer here. You can activate that window or you can go up to docs in the upper left and you get that same menu to select downstream keyer. Just make sure it's got a tick mark next to it and it should pop up uh, somewhere on your OBS uh, and you can move this around like anything else. If for some reason you're not seeing that, um, you know, step back through the installation, possibly check out Andy Lippy's uh, tutorial. He's got a little bit of a better description on how to install this plugin uh, if you're having any troubles. Once you have the downstream keyer up in OBS, what we're going to do is make a new scene uh, called full screen graphics. Um, it's just what I'm used to calling it uh, for my OBS setups. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, uh, but that's what I'm going to go with. And within that full screen graphics, I'm going to kind of explain here, um, you know, after I build this source, uh, what downstream keyer is going to do for us and what it can do for your stream. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is add a media source to this scene, and we're going to call it Flashbang. And I'm going to browse for our media source that uh, I will provide in the description below uh, for our Flashbang graphics that I created for this tutorial. Let me just dig it up amongst all these other files here. And the file we're going to use today is an AVI file um, and both of these files are identical in uh, what they're going to display. They're just two different uh, kinds of ways to execute things based on uh, your uh, setup and needs. AVI files are a little bit more efficient uh, as far as how they play out with transparency and OBS, less CPU usage, uh, but a much larger file size. I believe this one's just yeah, 2.89 gigs. Uh, and then the WebM version is much, much smaller, but your CPU has to do the work to decode it. So uh, see what works best for you. I recommend the AVI file if you can swing the hard drive space in the download time. Uh, if not, you can take the shortcut and use the WebM for now and see how your CPU handles it. Uh, but I am going to use the AVI file. I will leave a link in the description below of yet another video uh, from Epos Vox kind of explaining the uh, benefits and efficiencies of AVI files for alpha transparency in OBS. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a big deal. Um, so I would definitely check that out if you're going to dive pretty far into uh, this kind of thing. 
And you can see here the video file play out uh, as soon as I drop it in there. We're going to make sure in properties we have it set to restart playback when source becomes active and show nothing when playback ends. Once you have that in here, you can go to advanced audio properties uh, and switch to monitor only and mute output, which should reroute the audio through your desktop audio so you can also hear uh, this redeem go off and then uh, chat will hear it through the desktop audio. We're going to turn this source off and what we're going to do is in the downstream here with full screen graphics selected, you're going to press the plus button and then you're going to select this so it's highlighted in blue. And when you go to a different scene, uh, camera scene or a desktop scene, anything of the sort, uh, you can go, uh, I'm just going to go into studio mode so I can demonstrate this for you. So if I play out this animation, you'll see uh, on the right side that this source plays on top of the scene. So I'll play this out one more time and I'll, I'll turn this down. Um, but just to demonstrate, uh, I can actually transition the scene uh, and that scenes stays the source stays active on top of the scene through transitions uh, so it's a really nice way to do graphics for your stream uh to keep things you know a little more concise you don't have to put this flashbang uh graphic in every scene of your obs to make sure to play out depending on where you're at um it's just going to play it once on top of the stream is what the downstream cure is doing and then no matter where you're going even persisting through transitions while you're transitioning anywhere you're at in obs it's always going to play uh as a full screen graphic on top of your your stream so that's the the benefits of having downstream cure for this process from there we're going to jump into Atom to control that graphic and time it out to uh, work with our Elgato lights. So I'm going to bring Atom over here, and this is a totally blank copy, so it's just, uh, just kind of a from scratch situation here. Uh, what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to uh, go into Twitch Redemptions, and we're going to add a new redemption, and let's call this Flashbang. Uh, I'm going to just call it two for me because I already have this flashbang redeemed for my stream and it won't let me name it the same. Uh, and all we got to do is uh, name the redemption. Uh, you can put a description in here. Uh, it's optional, but this will show up when somebody selects the channel point or hovers over. It. It'll tell them, hey, this is what's going to happen. Uh, you don't need any user input and you want to set the cost here. Let's say 700 channel points uh, and a 60 second cooldown. Um, Probably want to make that a little higher so people don't troll you so much. Uh, but the choice is yours. Uh, you can always adjust these later. So you can save that. So that created a new redemption on your Twitch channel as long as you have everything linked appropriately with Atom. And you can go into rules here. And this is kind of where the meat and potatoes of Atom are uh, in order to create uh, different effects and rules and automations. So once you create a new rule, what you're going to do is just, again, name this flashbang just for the sake of organization. And we're going to go into the triggers section here. And under Twitch, you're going to select Channel Point Redemption. And under Redemption, you're going to find what you can do, which is really nice. Uh, you can just type Flash, and it'll narrow things down. So we'll go Flashbang 02 for us. And you don't need to do username cost or user input um, for this. Uh, and the nice thing, you can change the names here. So we can add flashbang. Uh, and I, I really like to do this as I'm going and building things in Atom because it really does uh, make things uh, a lot easier to navigate maybe in a month or two when, hey, I kind of want to change up this uh, redeem so at least you have things named and organized and you're not just looking at a, a bunch of generic channel point redemption names and, and action names and stuff like that. Uh, so after you get that sorted out, uh, you're going to go down here into the actions section and you're gonna find OBS local is what I named it, uh, but you're just looking for your OBS device. Uh, and we're gonna type in here uh, source, and we're gonna change source visibility. And the scene is going to be full screen graphics, and we're gonna select the flashbang source and make it visible. And after that, you can click create. Uh, that's just gonna kinda um, get this rule working and going. Uh, and we'll call this flashbang source on. Save that. 
the next step is to uh, we're actually going to take our key lights and we're going to turn them off in time with when the pin is pulled in the flashbang animation. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to find my two desk lights, which are uh, my Elgato left, uh, which if you guys didn't know in the control center application, you can actually change the name of your key lights uh, so that you can identify them a little bit easier. Um, but I know that uh, Elgato light identification is coming soon to Atom, so hopefully uh, that'll be in uh, by the time you uh, listen to this tutorial. So we're going to change the light state to off. And the action delay we're going to do here is three seconds because it's about three seconds from the start of the video to when you hear the pin pull. Uh, so it's just nice to time things out like that. Um, and what we can do is say left Elgato light off. And we can just duplicate that action. Uh, and we're going to remove the delay here. And we'll call this right. And we're going to switch this to the right Elgato key light. So we'll save that. Perfect. And next step is we want to set the light to 100%. Uh, as our, you know, just to time it for right when the flashbang goes off. Uh, so again, we're going to select the left Elgato light, uh, change light color. And what we can do here is just set 100% brightness. And what I like to do is I like to go just totally just cold uh, with the uh, color temperature on the light because it kind of it's a little more dramatic effect uh, for our action here. And we're going to delay this by one point eight seconds. These delays do stack, so it's going to be turn on the source, wait three seconds, turn off the lights, wait another 1.8 seconds, and then they do the action. So they're kind of subsequent. They stack on top of each other. Uh, and we'll call this left Elgato light 100%. Perfect. Save that. We'll duplicate it. Again, uh, switch to the right light, change light color. We're going to go 100% brightness here, and we're going to get rid of the delay because we want these to both happen at the same time. And on just about the last step, we got one more after this, we're going to turn this light to our default state. Uh, whatever whatever percentage and uh, color temperature, whatever brightness percentage and color temperature you normally have your lights at, you kind of want to maybe uh, check that before you start this in control center, um, before you test it and you... Uh, mess up your setup. See what percentage your lights are at. I usually run uh, my left light at 38% brightness and my right light at 20% brightness. So it's nice to just dial that back in. So we'll go left Elgato light 38%. We're going to set light color and I'm going to set this to 7600 color temperature. Um, I know that this is being worked on, but um, Elgato does make it a little bit difficult um, for them to get these color temperatures to match up. So 7600 is about equivalent to 4600K color temperature in the control center. Um, it kind of becomes a bit of an exponential curve. Uh, the, the bottom here at 2K is accurate and at the top 10K is more like 7000. So um, just fuss with this a little bit and you'll, you'll find the right temperature. Um, and I know uh, eventually, hopefully it'll be um, locked into exact values and it looks like I forgot to rename this one and this is going to be a six second delay for uh, this reset of the lighting we'll duplicate this one change it to the right light color go 7700 at 20 percent brightness and we'll get rid of the delay here and I'm going to rename this right Perfect. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to wait two seconds to turn off our uh, source, our flashbang source in the full screen graphics scene. So we'll select OBS in the device. We'll set the message type to change source visibility. We'll go to full screen graphics scene here and we're going to select flashbang again. And for this one, we'll actually make it hidden. And this is going to be a two second delay. So what we have, uh, let me rename this really quick, flash bang source 
off again just trying to stay organized and uh for when we come back in here and want to edit this uh at a later date uh so from from the top you have your channel point redemption that you created for the trigger you have an action to turn on the flashbang overlay source you wait three seconds turn the lights off wait 1.8 seconds to turn them on dramatically uh, in time with the grenade exploding. Uh, wait six seconds to reset the lights back to your default state, and then we wait two seconds to turn off the flashbang source so that it's ready to turn back on the next time this gets used. If I set everything up correctly, uh, I'll click uh, this preview button here. It's manually trigger the rule for testing, uh, and you should see the grenade Going fly across back. the screen, and there we go. Uh, there's a little bit of a white uh, frame in the animation to kind of dramatically brighten up the whole screen as your lights uh, flash bright and then they reset and now the source gets turned off and you're good to go. Uh, so this should show up uh, because we made a Twitch redemption rule um, for a channel point redeem for your viewers to press and have fun and likely troll you with. So again, the downstream keyer plugin really is the uh, crutch to this situation. Um, and it's just a, it's a super easy way to have fun with channel point redeems and have graphics pop up all over your stream without having to embed them in every scene and figure out the logic uh, to that whole setup. Uh, you just drop a source in here um, and with the channel point redeem, you turn it on, turn it off, uh, whatever timing you'd like, and it'll always show up on top of your scenes and persist through transitions. Uh, it's just a super simple, easy way to keep things organized for channel point redeems. Uh, but that being said, uh, this is the end of this tutorial. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, following along and hopefully you got something out of this. If you have any questions, if there's anything I missed, uh, please let me know in the comments section. Um, and this being uh, my first tutorial, let me know what I could do better, uh, what I did terribly, what, um, you know, what, just, just let me know how you, how you feel about it. So uh, I appreciate you listening along and uh, just drop a like, subscribe, all those things uh, for future tutorials, uh, likely a lot of them on the ATEM and just OBS Studio in general. Thanks.